Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is immense. With multiple locations, tons of systems, new jobs, and cool tweaks to the turn-based combat, there's a lot to keep in your head as you travel through Japan and Hawaii. And while the tutorial pop-ups do a decent job of introducing the systems, they don't always dive into the nitty-gritty as much as we need it, so we wrote out what we think are the most important things like a Dragon Infinite Wealth doesn't tell you. Or, that could be explained better. Weapon attacks, the ones where you grab something off the ground while running at an enemy, are fantastic for taking out more damage or hitting several enemies that are clumped together, but they're not always the best way to defeat the various hooligans you'll encounter. Consider which direction you can push your enemies, elemental weaknesses, statuses you can inflict, strike resistance, and other factors instead of just speeding through your attacks. Sometimes hitting an enemy into a wall or a teammate, or going with a grapple, will work out better for the current situation. And in rare instances, grabbing nearby objects can also deal elemental damage. Speaking of reading the situation, all three of Kiryu's styles for his Dragon of Dojima job have different uses, and all can be valuable. Rush is great to finish off several nearly dead enemies since he can attack twice. Brawler is great for heat moves or weapon attacks if you have something nearby you can use. And Beast makes your attacks grapple so you can guard break enemies with the shield icon. Since you can take as long as you want in between turns, scroll through the various styles and see what prompts appear at the top to figure out what's available. For attacks that require specific timing, try pressing a little early if you're having trouble hitting the sweet spot. There seems to be a bigger window before the circle closes that still allows you to succeed. We found much more success trying to be early than pressing it late. Rather than just using weapons that you find and buy as is, try to think of them as base materials. You'll most likely get multiple copies of the same base weapon, and you can use this as an opportunity to trick them out in various ways. Once you use these base weapons to craft better weapons at Julie's shop and upgrade them to level 10, you can start adding brands, which buffs them however you want. You can either double down at what they're already good at, like increasing the existing chance of applying a status effect or debuff, or even go for straight damage. You can also overwrite these brands by just spending a little bit of money. Breaking down these base weapons gets you very little in way of materials until you start disassembling really good stuff, so hang on to them in case you want to make a new one in the future, especially once you unlock jobs and multiple party members can use the same weapon. Infinite Wealth makes avoiding combat encounters easier than its predecessor. There's a bar that fills up as you get near them, and it gives you quite a bit of leeway to walk through their cone of vision. Just don't get too close even if they're not looking at you, or a battle will immediately commence. Get ready for this! Since random street encounters usually start with enemies in the same position you encounter them in, think about what direction you want to approach them from, such as putting them in between you and the wall, or lining them up for a special attack. Much time and MP can be saved by lining up that perfect combo before the engagement even begins. Thankfully, as you level up, your movement range will actually increase, so this starting position may become less important later on. In Yakuza Like a Dragon, trying to attack an enemy that had a bunch of his friends in the way was usually a bad idea as you'd get knocked away during the attempt, cancelling the attack. This mechanic has been removed from infinite wealth and you can run through as many enemies as you like. Infinite Wealth, as we've established, contains a lot of gameplay systems, rolled out over a long period of time. Chapter 4, which you may not get to anywhere from 8 to 12 hours into your playthrough, introduces a new method of transportation, the Street Surfer, which is just a customizable segue, and a new Pokemon-like minigame, Sujumon Battles. You can capture enemies on the street and force them to fight each other in 3 on 3 battles with its own separate storyline. Just try not to think too hard about the ethical implications of that. If you're looking to unlock the job system so you can adapt your playstyle, you'll finally be able to do so in Chapter 5. After you finish the long dungeon at the end of Chapter 4 and get through a few story points at the beginning of Chapter 5, you'll be prompted to go visit the travel agency. This is how you unlock new jobs for your characters. The first one, the Aquanaut, is free. But make sure you also spend $200 to unlock the Geodancer for Chitose and future female party members. Since these jobs are gated by Ichiban's personality traits, after this job sequence, you'll also be able to unlock the Onabara School to improve these stats. You'll also unlock the Photo Rally app, which has you taking photos of various locations to earn rewards. 
Whew, all that being said, getting through this section of chapters 4 and 5 makes it feel like you're really now in the meat of the game, so enjoy. And speaking of meat, if you're trying to find the secret food order combinations that give you stat boosts, make sure to check in the bottom right corner of the ordering screen for both the name of the order and the amount of items needed. Hints for these are usually found in the description of the items themselves. For instance, the up and smoke combination consists of bourbon, beef jerky, and smoked cheese, all of which have a variation of the word smoke in their names or descriptions. Keep a keen eye on these when ordering to find them all. Itadakimasu! Lots of information about status effects and debuffs are actually buried in the help menu, but they're very helpful to know early on. For instance, buffs and debuffs actually stack up to three times. So if an enemy is weak to something like electricity, continuing to hit them with moves that inflict that weakness will add arrows to the icon and make them even weaker to it. Also, burn does less damage over time, while poison gets stronger over time. So if you're in for a long fight, try to inflict poison early. Brainwash as a status effect is now also completely gone from the first game, but Charm is even stronger, as your enemies will sometimes perform follow-up attacks if you knock their teammates down. Make sure you check out the help menu in the settings to get specifics about how these mechanics work. When you stop in to shop at the various stores, buy the items that say in the description that they can be used as gifts, and also purchase the various animal foods. To build your bonds and aloha links, it's nice to not be caught out somewhere without a present for any human and or animal you could potentially befriend. Although a coconut can work in a pinch. Like a dragon may have infinite wealth, but we unfortunately do not have infinite time, so we'll have to cut it off there. If you need more Like a Dragon infinite wealth coverage, make sure to check out our growing guide on IGN.com. For more Japanese melodrama that can only be solved by tearaway suits and speeches about conviction, stay right here with IGN.